shit. Today is special guest, and I mean special. I've been I'm looking forward to this one, and it goes in well with mental health awareness. Terry Dunnage, what's happening, my brother? How you doing, brother? What's happening? Good to meet you, man. Nah, thank you, honestly, thank you so much for coming down on that, brother. Like, I appreciate you inviting me, man. I think it's important. I love yeah. what you're about, what you're trying to do. If I can support it in any way, I'm here. Nah, see, I say, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one because I know we, we, we spoke. Like, I know a bit, I know a bit of your story and all that. And obviously, mutual powers, but it's a powerful. And I think they say even speaking off camera. Like we've only had a bit of a podcast off the camera, you know what I mean? It's a deep one, isn't it? Let's get into it, but do you know what I mean? I think that the realness, uh, like, this, this is going to be really good, and I know people are going to connect with this one, so. Yeah. But I was going to say, those don't know you, but you, you know, obviously you're pretty well known, but for those who don't know you, like, let's, let's go back, man, let's, let's, let's tell the story. Okay, so how far do you want to go back, like, as in, sort of before the fire? Yeah, before, man. So, we. Being the missus, we moved to Devon, to Paynton in 2007. Just for a better life, get away from North West London, start fresh. Everything was pretty good down there. Um, my mum lived down there, that's why we moved down there. She lived in uh, Brixham. And my uncle lived down there with my auntie and my cousin. So we went down there, done the usual things, bought a jet ski, going out jet ski and just loving being by the sea. It's being, good being by the sea, isn't it? Oh, love, love the sea, Italian. especially in the south coast. Yeah, well, especially now, I live on the south coast, I love it. But um, yeah, we went down there, but first time, you know, living by the sea, it was beautiful, man. And, um, How old was you then? How old was you? 28 then. 28. Yeah, 28. So, uh, yeah, 2007, early 2007, we moved down there, just like January or something like that. February, so just before the summer, so I bought the jet ski and whatever else, just, just enjoyed that seaside life. Went sea fishing with my uncle. Yeah. So my uncle was down there and uh, he was loving life. He come from northwest London or, or from Middlesex. And uh, yeah, so I was doing a bit of the old sea fishing with him and everything else. We was going to set up a business, uh, landscape gardening business, because that's what he did. He was like, done that for life. And um, yeah, so to get to the sort of story side of it, Seven months later of being down there, and probably a few months before the event, me and my uncle go sea fishing and that. And he used to have this little diary in his pocket. Mm. And I didn't really think much of it, but he used to pull it out and go, yeah, tell me, do you know these um, registration numbers? They're from London. I think they're following me. And I yeah. sit there thinking, what the fuck are you all about, mate? Do you know what I mean? I don't know what you're talking about. No one's following you. What are they going to follow you for? Yeah. You've never done anything. You're just a normal guy. Yeah. Nah, they are there again in the house and changing my paperwork around and all that. I was like, mate. So I'd mentioned it to the missus a bit. I just thought, you know, someone's just going for a bit of a bad time. Yeah. Because I didn't even know he was suffering from mental health, you know what I mean? That was all kept a secret by my aunt and everyone else in the family. But apparently. So they all knew he was going through They all knew he was, they going knew he was yeah, because he was under the doctors and that, not taking his meds or something like that. And um, anyway, so then I think it was October 14th, I believe, in 2007. He. One day I'm sitting there, I was reading the Auto Trader at a table like this. The missus was cooking a roast behind me. And I was, just, I was looking for the actual uh, van or the mini deal for our business. So then he's come in that day and he's, he's come out with all these paranoid delusions. His, his eyes are like looking grey. He's like, mate, these people changed my paperwork around. You're something to do with it. I said, like, what are you yeah. I said, let me make a cup of tea. I don't know what you're on about, mate. And he said, oh, you know, you've got, let, you've got a letter up there from Essex. That's where my ex is from. You're coercing with her. I thought, mate, honestly, I said, you're gonna to have to go. I don't know what you're on about, mate. You know, I'll oh, calm down, I'll calm down. Mm -hmm. So we had the cup of tea. Mrs. went and bought the dog, and she came back. And he said, right, he stood up, so I'm gonna go now. And everything was like pretty calmed down a little bit. Yeah, so I yeah. thought, oh, no. and me and I looked at each other, I rolled her eyes. He said, oh no, before, so he said, I've got last week's all I trade in the car, let me get it for you before I go. So I went, all right, yeah, cool, go on and grab that. And then he went out and I was sitting there reading. I looked at the missus, both rolled her eyes. Well, fucking hell, this is what's going on here. Bit like vibey, isn't it? Like, I've been being around it and people going through it a minute. Well, it's a bit like, yeah, you don't yeah, know, like, uneasy, isn't it? It's uneasy, like, yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I don't like, even know how to. I've never been around that in my life or, or, or full, from my loved one. Do yeah. you get what I mean? You'd like, you've never had to deal with it hands on. And he said, he said, I shut the door because of the dog. But the dog never used to run off. We just thought, all right, next thing, man, he's. Fucking, he's come in with a petrol can, no lid on it, and a lighter. And yeah. you know, a big lighter thing. They stand there, and I'm still sitting here, standing there now. I slam the door. She's holding the dog in the kitchen yeah. by the integral garage door. And he said, oh, I want fucking answers. She said, what? He said, I want fucking answers to what's going on here. I know you lot say to do with it. 
And I thought, what am I going to do? I'm sitting here, all I'm armed with. Any other time, I wish I was eating my dinner. I know that sounds horrible, but I wish I was eating my dinner and had something, even a yeah. fork. You know what I mean? I was sitting there on a fucking auto trader. And he's, uh, he's pulled petrol over his own head now, standing here. It's gone everywhere. Smashing about, and he goes, oh, my answers are shit. Oh, but it's fucking surreal, isn't it? You know what I mean? Right, honestly, I didn't even, when you're sitting there, it's, you know like when they say you freeze? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a bit like that, because I thought, there's no way he's going to do, how's someone, like, your family, going to do what he's thinking of doing? Yeah. I thought, this is just all for attention. She, and then, he, and then he's, uh, he said, oh, I'm going to take you all with me. I said, Vince, you need to calm down. I said, because the only person who's going to be fucking gone today is you, mate. And he's like, oh, don't fucking throw me, and he splashed some across the table now, I'm sitting there with a hoodie on, splashed up me, and I'm still sort of half frozen, I don't know what to do. Yeah. She's opened the integral door to run out, she said, I'm gonna let the dog out. He said, you ain't going anywhere. So he took his eyes off me, run towards her with a petrol can. Well, I say run, he went to move quick, so I've had to jump up out the table, yeah. grab him, he slipped on the petrol. It's all over the floor, I've slipped on top of him. Next thing, he's laughing at me, trying to light the light up. So I just got into a frenzy, I was hitting him, yeah. and I was just telling her, fucking run. I was just doing anything I could, and then it, the light sparked, man. It went boom. It's like a bomb. I could. I swear to God, it was. I can't even explain it. My house was a reverse level house. I had these sliding doors, but just mm. with a rail in front of it. So you go down to the living room, up to the bedrooms. The kitchen was on the middle floor, like ground level. And uh, through all these flames, we're still like tussling or whatever. All I could see was the ray of light coming through the patio doors. So I've run for the light, because I can't, it's so intense, I can't see anything. I've tried to drag him with me, but it, it's all like the table, everything's restricting it, because he was groan, moaning and groaning. I've jumped over the balcony now, on fire, I ripped all my top, my hoodie off, threw yeah. it all off, but I had, remember the old daddy has Chelsea bombs? Like the poppery sort of one. Like yeah, like yeah, yeah. the thin, funny material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I had the like, shiny material, I had yeah. them on. Right. All I had was my trainer's socks, they had burnt away, I had a waistband left, my yeah. pants, and where I ripped all my top off on fire, I actually felt half oh, alright, I run back up through my house, because for the uh, downstairs back doors, I run up through the house, looked at the lift kitchen door that was still shut, could hear the fire, but I want to make sure the missus got out. Yeah, yeah. So I run out the front door, the garage door's open. And I was looking at and, and she was next door, like, oh, I screamed, what the fuck did he just do? Yeah. I don't know, I need to come in. I, Karen and the neighbour had kids, I went in and I was splashing water on my face. And just like, I used to have like blonde highlights of that little bit, yeah? I thought I was a little bit of a pretty boy back in the day. All my hair's gone, I've got like a full on skinhead. My eyebrows, everything's gone. And I throw water on my face and I was just red. And I thought, I, th I didn't think it was that bad to be fair. And then we could hear like all the sizzling because the house was like intensely on fire. So I said, well, well Karen, we better get out of all the kids' case. It all, but I just thought it, because we had the cooker on and that, yeah. saying it's going to blow. I mean, we went out the front, I sat on the curb out the front, because everyone said, he didn't come out, he didn't come out. Yeah. And I was sitting there, and uh, well, the whole street was out now, because it was like big black smoke. This uh, neighbour was a nurse, threw wet towels on me. And well, when I sit on, the, on the, the curb outside my house, looking back at him, thinking, well, she got out, he ain't got out. My skin was like, I seen how Robocop started dripping off my fingers yeah. and off my ears. So when I was wiping my face and that, the skin was coming off. Because oh, petrol keeps internally burning. Yeah. So I didn't know I was still obviously burning inside. And then the ambulance come, there was police everywhere. They took me into the ambulance and I was starting to shiver a bit. They give me an injection, I just remember it was like pure bliss, you know, like uh, yeah. whatever it was, uh, opiates or whatever they give you. There's some of the good stuff. Some of the good stuff, man, yeah, some of the good good they give you there. And then next thing I was in uh, Torquay Hospital with this big hood over me and my dad was there. Because my dad was visiting us at the time, I think he was down for a couple of weeks. And he was, I could hear him talking, but I could only hear his voice. He's going, going but my body was all shaking, I couldn't stop. Like, it was convulsing, yeah, yeah. and I was in shock and whatever else. And, it, and I said to him, I don't know if I want to make it, tell all my kids I love them and all that. And he, and he was going, no, you're going to make it, you're going to make it. And all, my, I, was, I was in this bubble, they put me in this big, like, like a balloon, best way to explain. And there was hundreds of people running around, it was mayhem. And I thought, mate, I ain't going to make this up. I ain't gonna make this at all. Before you're done, though. I thought I was done for, yeah, because yeah, I started seeing the light and everything. You know, when they say that, that's yeah. actually true, man, because it's like, you're sitting there, I think you're either thrown away, yeah. or whatever it is, I could see that, I could see the, the, whatever light it was. And next thing, they must have put me in the drug induced coma. Then they rushed me up to, they were going to helicopter me, but they'd done it in an ambulance to Bristol French A, old military hospital. And they said I was conscious for a few days talking, but I swirled up 
my mates come see me and that, and they said, you, like, they walked past me, because my head was the size of a football, and my whole body swelled up with water retention of the burns, so I had 48% burns. And then I was in a drug-induced coma for, I think, six weeks, five or six weeks, till they could take me out of it, because I had to do skin grafts, constantly scrubbing and taking like skin off my thighs, yeah. putting it down my forearms. Was you in a coma at this time or not? Yeah, I was, was in a coma as they were doing this? Yeah. Yeah, 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 I was in a drug-induced coma. And they um, cut the things I did, well, no, that was after I woke up. So when I was in that, uh, all I remember is the mad, mad dreams I was having. That's what I was going to say, like, I've never, I've never, never spoken with anyone that sort of being in a coma and that, like, I don't know if it's a silly question or what, is there any sort of memories like being in a coma, like, is it true, like, like dreams, nightmares, like... Yeah, it's a good, question, good question to ask, because yeah. I'll tell you for why, because I've said this to a few, and I've put it in my book, that um, when I was in the coma, I'd, like, I died twice as well, so they read my final rights twice, yeah. so there's no more they could do for me. I didn't know that. Didn't yeah, know to that. the family, mm -hmm. so they were, one, one time, because I, I could no longer breathe on my own, where I got so burnt, my neck was so burnt, I was... Relying, I caught every superbug in there, septicemia, um, yeah. MRSA, C. diff. Yeah. Like every superbug that kills you, I had every one of them, and pneumonia. So they couldn't clear my lungs because I had smoke damage as well. Yeah. So they, the first time they read my funnel, I said they ain't going to make it through the night. I pulled through that one. And then the other time, it was only purely, I forget the guy's name, I should know it to be fair, but he was an old military surgeon. And they, the, they come and read my final rights again. My sister threw the priest out, said, fuck off out, he ain't going nowhere. Mm. And they said, I go, he said, oh, let me try one more thing, turn him on his front so he can breathe from the back of his lungs. Yeah. So he, he turned me on my front and it really saved my life. Was the, the second time round, I'd have been gone. Yeah. Then, so from that, they woke me up, saying like after, all that I don't remember. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So when they did wake me up out of the coma, they, uh, oh, fucking up. I lost my daughter from a previous relationship as well, before her third birthday. Yeah. So my mum and the family were at to bar my ex from the hospital because I wasn't strong enough to hear the news. So this happened, this happened as you was in the coma? Yeah, while I was fighting for my life, my daughter from a previous relationship was fighting for her life. So in London. So the ex was wanted to come up to tell me, because like my daughter died in her arms, because she, she was prematurely born from birth as well, she had her intestines grow outside of her stomach, so her uh, stomach, it, in a sense, poisoned her to death. Mm. So, yeah, that was happening at the same time. Then, so I think I think two two days later, or three days later, and like I said, I remember him sort of waking me up, passing me the mirror. Do you want to know what you look like? Because I had this surgeon that always used to read a book at the end of the fucking, I remember, Red Hot Chili Peppers, you know, the lead singer of that. Because oh, yeah. I, was, I was had bandages and things, I couldn't move. Yeah, like, yeah. Just, Thing there, I couldn't. Even, I couldn't even talk because you had to. I had to point at letters because of this tracheostomy in my throat. And I couldn't do nothing. But I used to watch this nurse reading this book, and he said to me, "Anyway, do you want me to show you what you look like?" And I went, "Yeah." Oh, fucking hell, man! I, need, I, need, I remember the mirror, you know, them old plastic, yeah. old-fashioned ones. I looked at it. I swear to God, I didn't recognise myself. What was going through you when he said first thoughts? Oh, mate, it's like a monster looked back at me. Yeah. Like, honestly, yeah, like out of a horror movie, like, you know, like, remember Freddy Krueger? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, it's like that, like him jumping out the fire, I just thought, fuck, yeah, I don't know, I, thought, I weren't even really, like, I, I thought it, and I thought, I, I can't even worry about that in a minute, I can't yeah. even go take myself to the toilet right now, I'll worry about this one next. But then, that, the next time I fell asleep after the mirror thing, I woke up, and I had my ex, and my sister there, and I was like, and I, man, I was confused, I thought, what's going on here, like? I swear I was with another bird. Do you know what I mean? My missus that saved her life. What's she, what are they doing? What's she here? And then I thought maybe they'd come visit me because I'm in hospital. I was on all these drugs. So I was kind of happy. And they said she, they were both crying. And I thought, what the, what's going on here? And I thought, it's me now. I thought they're going to tell me, listen, like your missus didn't make it or you're not going to make it. I don't know what was going on. And then obviously they told me about my daughter. And man, I had to sit there but in ICU. Yeah. We've only a clock at the end of the bed, and now I deal with this. Well, I couldn't even imagine, bro. I couldn't even imagine it, bro. It was hard, man. Oh. It was proper hard to sit there and just think like that. That that was really yeah. forget the burns. That was everything up to seeing that mirror and leading up to that. Which I did tell you then, or not? In that when you, as you was in that uh, situation that you was in. Yeah, I don't know. Was, I it, think... was it was it the right time to tell you? Or the shit, or it, or it was it had to tell you straight away? Or, do you know what I mean? That's yeah. what I'd be thinking. Is that like? 
That's what I've got someone's not to me, like, how the fuck can you tell them? They've, they've just gone through what they're going through. How can you just tell them like that as well? Like, mm. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what I mean. There's a big argument amongst the family because they barred the ex from coming up. They literally mm. told the head nurses, you can't let her come in. Yeah. No, I think the nurses or the psychiatrists said you can't tell them. Yeah. Tell my family, as hard as it is, on his road to recovery, he needs every bit of strength he's got. Yeah. But I think... Yeah, it's a hard one, isn't it? Because you want to know, you want to know, yeah. but at the same time, maybe a few more days would have been good for me because yeah. from there, you know what I mean? I, I'm reliant on oxygen tanks. I can't grieve. Yeah. So if I can't grieve, because I can't physically, I can't even get up and spend a minute on my own yeah. to walk out of bed because I'm bed bound. I can't even literally walk. I've got to learn to walk. I don't even know all this shit. But they said, do you want us to take you out for a bit of fresh air after hearing that and I, with your sister and your ex? And I went, yeah, I need it. And, I, and we went outside, I remember it's raining, I had an oxygen tank and it's raining, it's just nice to see something outside. Yeah. And uh, But then I started figuring out, no, I can't walk, I couldn't do anything. So yeah, I think I think it was a bit a bit too soon maybe, but mm. because grieve, I, I can't explain to anyone, but grieving that of your daughter in the thing of where I already was at, yeah, yeah it was double hard work. I can that's not me, though. Yeah, that was a bit of a killer, that one, to be fair. Um, and then from that, obviously, my recovery sort of acts because now, but like we talked about earlier, goals, mm. dreams. So at that time, I had nothing else going for me, but my kids that are still here, and I wanted to be able to, like, people start talking about a few more, that my missus, ex-missus were talking about the few more on that day when they told me. So now I thought, right, I want to walk for a few more. So now I have purpose, I guess, okay, or, or, yeah. or a goal. That I want to, I have to, whatever happens, walk for that day because right now I'm fucked. So, I, I as hard as it was, I was doing I went through all the emotions, cried my eyes out when they're trying to get me to walk because I'm a 28 year old man that was yeah. able, and that was just from muscle deterioration over like six weeks or whatever, three months I was in hospital. Like, my legs were all skinny, I think I went down to like six stone or something. I'm generally 12 and a half to 13 and a half mm. stone. That's like half, that's like half your body weight. Half my yeah. body weight, yeah. And I, and I had no strength in anything, so that, that was like, I remember the first day they swung my legs around trying to get me up, and you get up, you're all dizzy because you've laid down for three months or whatever, and nothing was working. I just broke down and cried as a man, like in front of all the, all the ex, um, yeah. and cop, I can't remember what they're called now, the physios, in front of all of them. And then obviously, I had to be signed under a clinical psychiatrist then, from there onwards, because obviously my mental state was pretty bad. Mm. But we go back to what you said about the dreams now. So yeah. a week a week a week after being awake, there was a I I, I go asleep because they're still giving me morphine for the pain and everything else. They would all say you're tripping because I tell them about stories and I say, all right, you think I'm tripping? But I've never been to this hospital in my life and I was telling the missus and my mum. So I knocked for you lot last night in the family room. And they said, oh yeah, funny yeah. that because you, you can't walk, you can't even leave the bed. I said, yeah, could you come out here, do a right down the corridor, along down the left. I got it wrong by one door. Yeah? Yeah, but I've never been in hospital. I've never been in hospital in my yeah. life. And they're all laughing, thinking, yeah, that's just luck. Yeah. And I know, and, and I thought, but it was so real. And then another night, I remember leaving my own body. They reckon this weren't when that was, though. This was when I crossed over. The two times I crossed over, they yeah. reckon it was dreams from that, yeah? So I said to them, I pulled, I went last night and had a meal with my granddad. And my granddad said, it's not your time yet. Well, you're going to be all right. You're going to get back to your feet and do all the things you need to do. And... I said, oh yeah, how was that look then? I said, I don't know, I left here in a white Ferrari from the front doors. I went to a restaurant, it was all gated, they were dressed in white. Yeah. We had a chat and then I drove back, parked the car and come back to my bed. And she just gave me goosebumps, bro. Yeah, she said to me, yeah, it's... Well, it's it, it, you've got the shivers, the goosebumps that, but you feel it like, is it, it's, yeah, bro, right? That, that's, but let me explain to you the, the more side to that. So she said, so go on then, so explain to me how you done it then. So she said, just explain to me how, how you got back. Yeah. And I said, well, I come down the car park from the main gate, parked in the half circle, come out, come through the main doors, done a right, through past the um, head nurse desk, and in the left, got back in my bed here. Yeah. And she said, how the fuck do you know that? You don't, you don't even know what the outside of your soul looks like, because I come in the back door emergency, unconscious. Yeah. And I told her the whole, and the day they took me out in the wheelchair for the first time, and I was literally physically sick, on the floor, like on the floor, and I see it exactly how I see it yeah, yeah. out of my body. How can you know that? 
can't. You can't. You know. How you gonna? How you gonna know the direction? Yeah, you can't. Know. But you've I've seen things. I've heard people talking all about the out body experience and all that and that as well. Yeah. Have you seen? Have you seen some of the stuff online that talk about all like the yeah, out yeah. body? We must have looked into. I've looked into. I've looked into. Yeah. Cool. I, I, I'm, how do you explain it now? Like, if you've looked yeah. into it and that. I just think it is. It is out of body. It's got to be because I couldn't. I because I physically see it. I can't see something that I've never seen before in my I life. I know the right direction. Yeah, I can't know it. I can't. And when you take me out in real life and I see exactly how I see it, some some however else I did, yeah. out of body or what it was spiritually, however, then I believe that. Then yeah. Then but I've and from that, that actually changed my life a lot because it actually made me take a little bit of a journey, like we talked about the law of attraction. I started to look into more things that I believed in, mm. where I took for granted for many years or never bothered to look into them. Mm. If someone else told me that, I'd say, right, you're fucking mental. Uh, but no, that's, that, that's well, gospel truth. That was at a difficult time in my life. That's how I discovered law of attraction, isn't it? It's funny how sometimes it comes to us and when, when you, when when you most moment. need it. Yeah, well, yeah, when you, yeah, when when you, you most need it, it's when yeah. it comes. But that's real talk though, isn't it? That's well, well, and, that, and that's on yeah. oh, my daughter's grave. That's exactly what I see. And that is, apart from things that I knew, and you can know the difference between real and not real, because in other nights, Many nights when I was falling asleep and they drug me up, I say to the missus or my sister, because I make my sister sleep over in the, in the other hospital, but don't go, don't go, why? Because they're fucking wheeling me down to the basement and wearing the slush puppy parties with all the burning darts <laughs> 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 and that's the gospel truth. I used yeah, to say yeah, that yeah. every night. So I say like, <laughs> and that nurse keeps sneaking behind me, sneaking juices down me, tubing in my yeah. nose and I'm being sick. They're not telling me. They are, oh, look, she's there, fuck off. I can't see it and all that. Yeah. So, and it, that's the difference. You know between a, you can look back. Actual something. You yeah, know that was just sort of. Yeah, I know that was just like tripping out. That was that morphine, innit? That was the yeah, morphine that was shit, innit? But then the room. Yeah, it sounds too much. It sounds too. It sounds like to know exactly where you're going and all that, though. That's what I mean. It's brilliant. Yeah, right. It's not your time. I can't remember. That's, that's not. That's not tripping morphine, bro, innit? That's, no, that that's, 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 that's deep, Yeah, that's probably. How I see it is how when they wheeled me out and see it in real life. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah, but from there from there on inwards then really is that you know like from a from a guy that I believe you know, I don't wrong I didn't have the greatest upbringing but this is but I think my upbringing now in this situation saved my life and I'll tell you for why because resilience from a child of being in care living at everyone else's houses not really having the greatest parents and family support I think that made me a resilient guy in life so my resilience come back and saved my life in the end, as in the, to get through all of this that I did, to, what, what, what your question really was, the, how the fuck did you get through this? Is yeah, the, so there's your how, how did you, bro, how did you get through it? Well, I think it was because I was resilient from a child, but like what we talked about earlier, probably yourself, is that how you got through what you got through, you know, is that if you, if you can hang on to, you know, some people don't come back from it, as we know, mm. a lot of people don't, so you, when people say to me, well, how did you do it, it's not. I'm going to be different to you, but I truly believe my resilience saved me from a child and my upbringing, for, as bad as it was, set me up, everything sort of paid for you, maybe I needed that to set me up for this in my life mm. and maybe this happened to me in my life because I was going down a lot of wrong roads and doing things that I thought life was so good and so easy that, you know what I mean, I didn't really, I was probably better than that and this made me a better person as well through all of this story that happened to me and Obviously, we'll go on to more of the road to recovery in a minute, but that that's really what saved me and brought me back because it, it, I come out of it actually wanting to help people as well because when I was sitting in hospital after all of this now and I'm still on my road to recovery, doing physio every day, learning to move again, my hands, because nothing worked, everything was burned. Like, I couldn't even close my hands. I had to exercise every day. Let me ask you something. When you go going through this, real question, is there any time that you thought suicide? The only time you thought, well, fuck this. Every time, bro, from the minute I first looked in the mirror. From yeah. the minute I see that monster look at back at me, it was only when they told me about my daughter, it'd give me another purpose, or, or I started yeah. grieving, that it actually took it away from my own yeah. self for, for that good few months. But yeah, no, I thought that from day one. I, I, I thought I had a few thoughts, really. I thought, one, I'm going to tackle my whole body to get rid of it, because that's mm. all I knew. And yeah, I thought about that all the time. And, so I started saying one time, there was many times on my journey, I just thought, why well, I'm done, do you know what I mean, motion is the mental wolf, and I was just always sitting there thinking, oh, the fuck, like, I'm, I'm not done. Do you get what I'm sort of saying? Like, yeah, cool, yeah. Because you think about it, and then there's like, considering it, you know what I mean, that's what I always said to people, it was like, always thinking about it, and it was like, you know, really like, considering it, and all that, do you know what I mean? And 
not a lot of people speak out about it in that these days. That's, that's why I ask, isn't it? Yeah, so, no, yeah. yeah. Like, you, like we said, we yeah. speak freely, and and that's what I sort of related to because I, yeah, I have been there, and mm. uh, and if you know, you know. So yeah. when I read your parts of your story, I know you would have been sitting there, and that's why we say, do you know what? It's different roads, but same road to recovery. Yeah. How, you know, it's same emotions, in, like same emotions, yeah, same different scenarios, scenario, situations can cause that, but. Emotions are still emotions, feelings are still feelings, thoughts are still thoughts. Of course, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And a man's still a man trained a fool. Yeah. So yeah. I, I know that you would have been sitting there, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you would have been sitting there many times in your life thinking, what the fuck have I got? What's the point? Yeah. Who, 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 who's there for me? Yeah. And, you, and, that, and that is exactly in your world, locked up, my world, trying to get back to my feet. In, the, in this world, not locked up, but the same thing. Yeah. Because I think, what the fuck, what good am I? Why, why don't I want to be here living with this grief or living with this, yeah. living with my own thoughts? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, I thought that many, and I tried it. I, I was literally, I, <laughs> this is probably for sure really sad camera, but like, I nicked my mate's shotgun, where I knew where saying it was, and I sat there and I got pissed, and I don't really ever do drink. I'm not really a drinker at all. I'm not really into anything like that. But, I got drunk, I sent a text, a group text to everyone, said my goodbyes. I'd had enough because I, for one, I was grieving mm. and I thought I, I couldn't live no more knowing that my kid had gone before me. Mm. And I didn't know how to deal with that as well as dealing with what I was trying to deal with, my own road to recovery. Yeah. So I had double things going on. And I thought, you know what, I just don't, I, I don't want to live in my head anymore. Mm. I want it all gone. So I sat there and I literally sat there a couple of times thinking, and it was like, it weren't even like one of them good old fashioned bank robbery short, it was a long cut. So I was sitting there, you know what I mean? I was thinking like, and I, and I think it's probably only because I didn't have the bottle to do yeah. that, and I didn't really want everyone to know that, oh yeah, he blew his brains out. Then mm. I start thinking, should I throw himself or drive my car into a tree? I had all these mad thoughts this night. And then the actual time, like they all called the police. Like, I think they figured out where I was, or I told me mate where I was. They come, they took it, that was gone. The police, and it was the only time I was actually appreciated to see, you know like the good old fashioned police that was yeah. actually generally caring. Yeah. Like, a policeman talked to me and he was like, you know, we're always here for you. And, and I'll never forget that because I've never really been a lover of the authorities or whatever you could say. But yeah, he was, he was quite a nice guy and all my friends were there with me. My family was there and I think I just looked at my family and thought it was a bit, and I've got to think of my kids and that. And I thought it's a bit selfish, but mm. yeah, that's the time when I come close. I, I think another time after that I was going to take a load of pills. So probably two times I came so close. There was, that's what I'm saying, there's always like thinking about it. And then there's when you the hit that, was consider, always, yeah, yeah. When you hit that, that moment, it's considering like, obviously the, the two times, I've, I've, I've hit it once in my life, I've thought about it many times when I was away, yeah. but when you hit that point of actually considering and you, you know, it's not about attention or nothing like that, it's actually you're taking a match and it's like, it's really sort of like, oh, 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 yeah, it's got yeah, to the yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I thought it many times as well, but mm -hmm. to get to that, yeah, at that, that point, it wasn't, People say it's a cry for help, but I was always on my own anyway. I, yeah, I don't, think, I don't I need help. Is, I think you know. I think a lot of people, do, you know, they, they can't be attention for that cry of help, and you know, and that's when they need their help. You know what I mean, that's when really, that's when people need it. But I think no, that's not a cry for. I think that's the point where you just, you really just, you're sort of done in you know? Yeah. So I've been done. You know. I think a cry for help is when you threaten to do something, isn't it? Not on, and and or you you keep talking about it to yeah. people. Where I, I generally never spoke to anyone about my own. Thoughts with it. I never ever said, yeah, I always, maybe not a psychiatrist, but I never ever said, yeah, I always think about it. Yeah, it's not the sort of thing because then people say you're mad. Yeah, do you know what I mean? So, well, I've had that. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that one, I mean. Yeah, that's what I like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a psychiatrist? Did you find, I've done work with psychiatry and like, did you find it out? Actually talking, because you said you, didn't, you never really spoke about what was going on in your head and that. When you, when you did sit there with psychiatry and you did talk about it, did that, did that help? I think it's a release. I think I, I think it's, I, I truly believe that, because I used to have this sort of missus all the time, she'd say, it's helping you. And i say, no, it's not, because she'd take me back to my child and all that. But one thing I did realise, and, and I didn't actually realise this, because I'd say no. Mm -hmm. i say, no, I, I truly believe I've got it here myself. Because I, I think I did, yeah. a lot of it. I've had to find my own sense of humour to come back. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and I'll go back to that how I've done that as well because it's, it's, it's never been spoke about because when I had the charity I always had to keep like squeaky clean like don't, don't mention anything but there's a true story to that but on a psychiatrist I, I realised it now I'd say, I'd say no she was a lovely person 
She's the head of the Burns Unit. I went to her meetings afterwards with other burn survivors and whatnot. And I, and I really, I really love her. I think she's brilliant. And we had a bit of a loggerheads when I wanted to release my actual document, my psych, psychiatric reports in my book. Yeah. And I've done it step by step. And she said, like, I can't, I can't, it's your reports, but some of it, I don't want my name to be in it. And I said, that's all right. Don't matter. And she said, I've never had anyone want to put their own psychiatric. And I've talked about everything on it. You know what I mean? From growing up. And she said, I just think you should, like, filter it down a little bit because you're trying to inspire people. But I did anyway because I thought it was important to share someone going through it every step of the way. That's how raw and honest I wanted it to be yeah. with anyone that was in a similar situation. Uh, but, but I would say no. But what I did learn is after I wrote my book and we'd done a book launch and everything else and I actually, because I never bothered reading it to be honest and I, and I read a bit, a bit of it. I went inside, I read the full things I never did. I lived the stories, I didn't really yeah. feel like I need to read it but I did read the reports and I see the change in the reports as in that um, I think, I used to think, why do they keep taking me back to childhood? I was burnt at 28 years old and she keeps asking me about when you was a kid, when you was, and that mm. was, I found annoying. But then I, I realise it and, and, I, and I go back to when I said having resilience as a child, although she, she was doing it and when we spoke about it after, she said, I'll, I'll tell you why I took you back as a, as a child and why psychiatrists do it. It's because I built a character of who you was before mm. to know how strong a character you are to get through and how I needed to work with you on, on what and when now. Yeah. So she was just, she, think, and she said to me, I, I knew from your young, young, days that you was a strong character and I always knew that you would come back to you and and that's when I thought yeah, they're, yeah. so they yeah there's always and a method to their madness always is yeah I just didn't I, I just believe I still believe I've done a lot of it myself we but be cool. it's, uh, she made me realise a lot of stuff so you have yeah. to yeah you have to give the, I, I believe it must work somehow yeah. hey? that's, that's she, Jennifer Kilcorn the only done it with me the, 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 the psychiatrist the solid psychologist that she fought my she fought my back in there like yeah. You know, I was pretty much ripped off in the system. I was just seen as like a bit of a cunt. Yeah. You know, I was done, I'd done a nine month segregation with them because they said I was going to take Ian Brady hostage. So I had to do nine months seg and that was fucking test. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's pure lock up, no light, nothing in there with you. Do you know what I mean? And you're literally there going dark room. Yeah, literally when you're there going, but I made it dark as well. So it literally was a dark room because you become so, that's your little mini world and all that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it was real test. And, yeah, I went through the emotions of you know, giving up and Jenny she come to my door and I'm like, oh man, but she always come and she, she got me through that journey and like Sam, but they do, they always they seem to go back to childhood and all that. Take you back to childhood, don't they? Fucking childhood, and they take you back, don't they? And it is a sort of building, yeah. It's... But, but see, at the same, at the same time, like, that's, that's what I think, you know, like, I, I was also the same, I'd, I'd sort of be indoors a lot and probably draw the curtains, watch TV or whatever else, play computer, but... I never see how that was going to help you where, where they segregate you. I know for whatever, you know, that's the punishment, but ultimately, if you're trying to help a man change, to me, that's just going to make your mental uh, health worse. It's meant to be an hospital. I, there's one quote I say, especially from Broadmoor. They say, you go there, you know, it's class, technically it's class as a hospital, isn't it? It ain't, but yeah. technically. They say you go there, therapy and all this stuff. You need therapy when you get out of them fucking places. <laughs> yeah, just you know what I mean? Yeah, you, know, like, you say you meant to go there, get therapy, get well now. You need therapy when you get out to get well when you come out of them fucking places. Yeah, especially Broadmoor. You know, I, I did grow as, a, as in, in Ashworth, but it was more, like you were saying, you did more myself. It was the self sort of journey. Like, you know, when I picked up that book, Law of Attraction, no one put that and said, you know what I mean? It's the choice that I sort of made myself. And that's when it's yeah. So when you sort of so when you say it yourself, yeah, they they contributed whatever, but it was yeah. ourselves that sort of got us through it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, of so course. Yeah, late yeah. When you said that, yeah, because you have to. Some, but maybe for you, so I feel a lot of things on people who are probably like yourself now. When you've been through it all, and I feel that that's where where, where you come out of there is where you sort of add that little bit maybe, not more freedom, but a little bit more. Sounds like you had a bit more support coming out of Broadmoor. That's where you could start your journey a bit better on yourself, your self journey. Yeah, I think it was the, it was the boots. I think it was a kid out of Broadmoor. Broadmoor was like a fucking jungle, bro. Like it's hell on earth. Yeah. Getting to Ashworth is a bit, a little bit more different. I started like got involved with it. You know, start working in sort of gym. A bit normality, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a bit more sort of normality there, and that's when I got. I, I, when when I, I knew in twenty twenty I'll get out. Yeah. 
But I'm doing, I'm doing definitely, I'm doing life. No one's told me, you know, I think doctors told me you'd be lucky out, out before you're 40, you know, someone said, you, you ain't getting out anyway, you carry yourself and blah, blah, blah. So you, but in, in my head, I just knew 2020, you know, and this law of attraction, that sort of faith, that like you're saying, that purpose, when you sort of, when you start getting that sort of purpose, and I think that just lifts your energy. And, oh, yeah, you know I mean? that, that's why it's always important to have goals, like they say, yeah. like, when people say to you, like, have goals, you think, yeah, all right. Yeah. But it's true, because yeah, like yeah. you said, if you've got to say it to, how I did with my daughter for the funeral, how you did, because you, you had something to do, 2020 goals. If you set your goals, then, then you have something to you have purpose and something to work towards. If you don't have that, then it's kind of hard to look forward yeah. beyond today. So how did you get to that point when you're standing, you're standing a lot more, you're standing in bed and sort of curves, drawing on computer, TV. When, when did it sort of, when did that sort of, turn, you, turn around? Yeah, when did it sort of like, start when you started pushing? Because I've seen all your stuff now, like, you look driven bro, like, you went out and did it, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, yeah, because I, I, I don't even know, bro. It's hard to look back at it now, you know, because I actually lived quite a, an amazing life for the small little bits that I'd done to me was quite yeah. amazing in my life. Cause I was, it is amazing, I've seen it. I was a no one, you know what I mean? I, I, think just, start, I didn't want to look too sort of deep because like, I yeah. like it, sort of being very organic on it. But, you know, I couldn't help because I'm fat, I was fascinated by the story and that, that's yeah. myself. So I kept looking and looking and I've seen a lot of the things you've done. Yeah. And it was amazing. That's why today I was really looking forward to today because I connect with you. Now yeah, it's, it's different, but it's, 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 it's simple, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 100%. Lot, you know, yeah. Like we said earlier, I'm the same as me. When I, I, I see your story, I never heard of you before, but your story came up on something. I watched it, and then I thought, and then I looked in a bit more, and I thought, yeah. oh, do you know what? Like, I always wondered how you did it. So I, I was in order to meet you <laughs> yeah. at the same time, because I think, fucking, yeah. well, I, I, I done it, you done it. It's just like, that's, that's, that's yeah. amazing. But I, I guess my turning point was, I'm, I'm trying to go, I, I go back to, when I left hospital, I come out of hospital, now I know it was for Christmas, because I thought when I woke up I missed Christmas, because there's all these Christmas decorations. Thought, yeah. ah, Christmas is gone. But it weren't anyway, it was just leading up to Christmas. And uh, I got released before Christmas. I've done a few more in December. So, oh, so let's lead up to the, so the few more the first day, I came back to London. I nearly, I nearly had to have a nurse come with me, because three days before, or two days before, they said to me, he won't be able to go without an oxygen machine and his wheelchair. So I thought, man, I can't be doing that because I had this goal that I wanted to do it. But without the oxygen, I, I couldn't breathe because I'm addicted to it now. Everything I was addicted to in that place, like morphine, that was, everything. So every day, like my sister was sitting there, and I never missed nothing. And the nurse would go out and I'm like, so I couldn't, and I keep doing it so I couldn't. And then the day I was going, they said these oxygen levels are really good. Like we've had to put a mask on him. Purely because I was training myself. Yeah, 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 training yeah. myself on the slide. I like so that, I, like that. Uh, I got over that. So they said, "Well, listen, we're com we'll take it with you, but we're comfortable that it'd be all right. Just take his wheelchair because he's unsteady on his legs or whatever." And and a few days before, I'll tell you a funny story. So a few days before, it was Mrs. I said, "Listen, I need to take a shit, but I want to go in that toilet because I was in this room, nice and it had an ensuite. They're all going to the toilet. I'm sitting there. I have to keep ringing the bell. They're lifting yeah. me up, putting a potty under me, and all that. And I just wanted my dignity back for one yeah. day." So when I said to them I want to go to toilet that night, they wouldn't let me, two days before this the funeral, they wouldn't let me go. So I thought, I, there's no way I'm going to kick, because I have to keep wetting my bed and that, brother, you know? and yeah. I don't know, like, this, this is demoralising, or whatever you want to call it. So one day I flopped out and pissed in my missus' slippers or something. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's like, fuck, man, she's pissed all over my slippers. I thought, yeah, I ain't pissing myself in my bed. <laughs> now I can turn halfway, I'm turning, there's a bit of physio been done there, you know what I mean? And then, uh, that must be a bit of a self joke to yourself, just a bit of like. I'm like, still laughing at it, yeah, because like, I didn't know her slippers were there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought you were for them. Yeah, I could see, I was just like, just want to piss the bed for one night yeah. after like six weeks. And then. Uh, before we are, well, I'm going to take the piss in, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah so. no, if, if, if I knew, man, I'd have aimed a bit better. But she, she, I said to her, I said to her, I need, I need to take a dump, let's go to the toilet. And she said, oh, I can't really let you out of bed. I said, don't, just fucking take me to the toilet. And I've got this thing, I know these machines fucking sat. At oh, this time, I've got this, the bags and all that. I've said in the like, like there was it, the walking drip sort of thing. Yeah, like yeah, drip yeah, thing yeah. now because I've, and, and I've got a, a thing on my in, a catheter in, in my front, but they took it out of the back because that's another thing that I like the hospital now. I could have had a big court cool case against him. I caught every superbug. They turned me over one night, my catheter, and they done my main artery in my in my arse. Fucking hell, boy. And literally, when I say blood, because they dropped me out of bed. But no one ever believes that story, and I don't know if I was still tripping. Yeah. But I swear to God, I sort of remember him dropping me, and the, the cable got pulled, and it and it erupted my main artery. So I had to get rushed off to that to get stitched up. 
So that's another story, because so much happened in hospital, yeah. I'll tell you. One night they didn't even have bedding in there, they give us curtains. Yeah. So I was on my bed <laughs> in Bristol French, eh? it was the worst hospital in the UK, or second worst for superbugs. I had a curtain as a blanket in my bed, because there was like literally no linen in the hospital. Okay. Whatever the story was, I can't even remember the story with that, bro. But anyway, so I convinced the missus to take me to the toilet, so she's wheeling me, and I'm really unsteady on my feet. I've gone toilet and all that, such a relief to use the toilet to have a dump for the first time. Come out of there, now we've opened the door inwards. She's trying to, I'm trying to hang on to the thing. You know these things are flimsy? Yeah, yeah. I'm fucking gone. Oh, I'm gone, but that's gone, that's gone. It's ripped my skin on my on the end of my dick because the thing's ripped out. Yeah. So we're sitting there, I'm bleeding. I said, don't call the nurses because we're both embarrassed. Like, how the fuck am yeah. I going to turn you into the toilet? I said, just so we've done it in a thing in the bar. So I actually got circumcised by my own catheter. <laughs> Oh, and that's a true story, you know, the skin yeah. like, broke and there's no skin, so... I can feel it! I can feel it, man! Oh, let me feel something, I'm, I'm feeling that, bro. I, 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 still, I can still imagine that pain, bro, it was unbelievable. Oh, man. <laughs> it, it was sore, man, it was sore oh. to say the least. But, uh, yeah, that was a funny story, so, but from there, so... Uh, where was we at? Coming out of hospital now. So they're releasing me. And, and we talk about anxiety now, so I've never had anxiety really in my life before that. I've come home, I haven't been home an hour, I'm sitting out itching, because I'm off the morphine. You know when they say, like, yeah. it making me itching all the songs I'm and all that. Drugs. It's like opiate, it's like gear, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like doing heroin. Yeah. And I could feel like all this, like, like spiders crawling, so the father-in-law sitting there, like, ticking my back. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he, he's a guy that's like, you'd love to probably speak to one day, he's big into AA, yeah? yeah. And he was at the Broadmoor, not the Broadmoor, the Summit Rights in Manchester. Oh, Strange Ways. Strange Ways Rights and all that. Yeah, he was only in there for like a bit of puff or something, and he was ended up in all these fucking things. On the roofs and all that. Yeah, he'd only been there two days. <laughs> <laughs> but he's there. Uh, yeah, imagine, so that's the kind of character he is. He's tickling my back. Because yeah. I'm itching. I, 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 I said to him, I've got to go back. She said, why you, every day you've wanted to get out there, built yourself up to say, you could do this and do that to get out. Now you want to go back? Yeah. I said, yeah, I can't. I, I can't live, I need, to, I need to be monitored, do you know yeah. what I mean? So that's when my, I remember my first panic attack then, and uh, from that I'm, on, I'm addicted now to everything else I've got. I can't, because I've been insomnia in ICU for so long, or wake 24, like different hours and that, I can't sleep, so I've got tamazepam for that, for sleepers, yeah. and then I've got, and I can't sleep without these fucking things now, I keep taking these, and Valiums for my anxiety now. Yeah. So now I've got this bad addiction. I've come home now. We've come back to London. We've left Bristol, come back to London. And I was sitting in, uh, I don't know, sorry, I was leading up to the couple of days before the funeral. Let me just go back to that, sorry. The day I walked, my journey started. You said to yourself you was going to walk. Yeah, I said to myself, yeah. like you did, 2012, I said I was going to walk for this day. Mm. So I've done, we myself at the machine now. I'm now circumcised. Everything, everything's going in my favour in that way. I've got, I've come to, I've come to London now without the oxygen machine, or maybe we had it in the car, but I didn't need it. But I've got a wheelchair still. Turn up in my mate's house. My mates, they said to me, what, they're car dealers. What cars do you want to go? I said, I have busy little black Range Rover Sports or whatever, saying like proper nice, because we've got our horse and car and all that. They said, yeah, right. And then yeah, you know, we've got the cars. Can I get dropped to my house. So I went to my mate's house. He got big old gaff. All these cars, nice. It was nice what they did. And I said, I want to drive. He said, don't be stupid, mate. You're not insured. I don't think you're allowed to drive. I don't yeah. think you can. I said, yeah. no, I've got to drive. So they were, they were a bit nuts, like, they got going, and they thought, it's funny, go ahead, you drive. So I drove for the first day there. I got out and walked for the very first time without nothing, like, mm. even just through heart. And yeah. my, what we said, it's promise It's a powerful myself. thing, though. It's yeah. a powerful thing, though. Powerful, man. When you've got the eye, you've got that mind, the same. I said that the other day, when, you, when, you, when your mind's set and saying nothing can fuck, nothing can get in the way of it. Nothing can mind. change that. And, and, and that's what I always say to everyone. When they say, how did you do it? I say, mindset. Yeah. It's not, it's not a genius thing. It's if you, train, if you change your mindset mm. or your, your thought of, thoughts in your mind, then you can achieve mm. what's outside of your narrative that you think every day. 100%. And, and that's why I believe that's powerful. And, and so I've done that. I walked, I walked that day. I was proud of myself. It was a good send off. If it, so come back from there now, go back to hospital, get checked out, come back to London, because I want to be in, back in London now, I'm done with Devon, don't want to be in this Bristol gaff, come back, but I've got these pharmaceutical addictions now, I can't, if I don't have the tablet I'm panicking, so yeah, I'm having I mean, more. I've, 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 the one was a tramadol. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. That was my yeah. Tramadol. Yeah, I've, I had a few of them, but, but it was more Dizzy was my Dizzy, favorite. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've been on Vars so every now and then I still take them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have to like, so every now and then with... Look, man, we've got addiction now. I've been there, that addiction with emotionals away. I was using it as like escape. Yeah, just, fuck just to work, get out of it. You know what I mean? And I sort of... You know what I mean? Because I, I, I didn't even admit this on camera myself. You know? <laughs> and the people know I take them because I admit it, but I don't actually yeah. say what I take, but they're one of the ones I take, not you still take every it. now and then, just sometimes. Like, take the anxiety, yeah. yeah. So, so if, if I've got on a flight, and I, I hate to lie, I'm like Mr. T, oh, I'll do a whole packet of yeah. just because I know like, <laughs> through that flight, it's not a great thing. I'm not condoning it, obviously, but yeah. that's what I would do. It's, it's, it's not a bag of those, it's, it's what we do. It's what, yeah, it's what we it's was. Uh, but then, so, so then from here, people said that, well, because now I have, when, when I talk to people, and, they, and I can talk to people in addiction, because the father-in-law was in addiction, and they say, well, what do you know about addiction? Well, pharmaceuticals are fucking addiction, but yes. I could not live without them tablets. Mm -hmm. So, and more... On the mind. It, you find it was on the mind. Like, yeah, course, yeah. If, if I got it, excuse to take, yeah, 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 yeah. Just take, I have to take it yeah. religiously, even if I don't even need it. Yeah. I've got, I don't know, it's that, oh, fuck me. It's yeah. got the time, I have to take that, so... It's mad that so much it just takes up the mindset. Like we were talking about yeah. mindset, them, the tablets and that, them when the pharmaceuticals, they just take up. They, that's they that's a massive part of your life. Like, that's look that's if like I can realise it, that's yeah. why you don't realise it. Like, just taking so much up your brain power every day. Like, just, yeah. yeah. That. And, and that's why I don't like them, bro. I, I, I can't stand the fact of. I, although, like the missus will tell you, he takes a headache tablet every time he's got a headache, even for the fun of it. Yeah. Yeah, well, if I've got a headache, I want to take one, <laughs> regardless. But I, I like to think, holistically, I'd rather, I don't believe all that crap work, helps. Mm. That's, I think it makes you worse. And I'll tell you for why, because my anxiety was absolutely peaking when I was on all of that. Yeah. My sleep patterns was like, I weren't leaving the house. I built, and this is what I lost a plot, I built, I did lose a plot for years. I built a gym in, do you remember that? I built a gym in, a gym in the living room, yeah. in the fairway. Yeah. She said, this is, what the fuck are you, I had a punch man, because they said yeah. to me, you know what, Tell you're never going to be able to, and I was never a boxer, but I used to, love, I used to train, I used to love yeah. it. It was just like yourself. I loved it, I loved the sport, yeah. it was my favourite sport. My old man was a football manager, they all good footballers come through him, and I hated it, because yeah. I didn't live with him, and he always wanted me to be a footballer. So I thought, no, I want to be a boxer. Yeah. So, but they said to me, like, all my skin used to rip, I couldn't do anything, so, and I had, like, it was so sensitive, I couldn't even bang my hand, you know, like, yeah. it, it burnt all my, um, feelings, or whatever they're called, epidermis and that, you know what I mean? So, I had this, you know, like, a silhouette, the punch man, you know, them Everlast punch man. Yeah, yeah. I had a row machine, weight bench. So every day, the missus used to go to work, because I, I, I'm a bit like a private person, I don't want to be sitting there making a sceptical, I'll do it on my own. So every day, I used to train in the living room, and I used to do the row machine, I come, I become so good at that, and I used to do the punch man. And my hands used to bleed, and I used to punch it every day till they bled, 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 yeah. till they didn't bleed no more. Now I'm not talking going mental, just like a bit of sparring on it. Yeah. And in the end, everything came back. All the things that they told me that your mouth will never move again because your skin's so tight, your neck, yeah. you lose movement. I used to hang over the bed, so that's where my journey started because now I've got, I buried my daughter, and now I'm going to put her name in lights. That's why the logo on my thing is, that's on her grave, mm. because she had the, her name all in the heart with the wings around it. Yeah. And she had a tiara, but I put the crown, so the tiara is personal to her. So that was my thing now, that's what I'm gonna do. That's what's gonna, and I'm gonna get to my feet doing it. I'm gonna defy everything they told me, that you know, I'm mental now, I'm not gonna be, you're gonna be on disability for the rest of your life. I said, nah, I'm not gonna do all that. Mm. And I am gonna move and I am gonna look up again. And I am gonna be able to do all the things I love to do. And I've done all that and then I've done Tough Mudder. You don't know what? I don't know Tough Mudder. Oh, no, I do that. Tough, that yeah. tough Mudder's sick, bro. I've been waiting to do that a long time, man. You yeah. really, you've done it, yeah. I don't want to done it, yeah. We interviewed the owner and all that. He said, oh, if yeah. I have done it again, he'd run it with me personally. Yeah. And that was, that, so that was my next goal now. Cause, and bearing in mind, I've never done nothing like that in my yeah. life. But that was, that's what my next thing was. I'm going to lead up to that because I'm going to inspire other people from our positions. Yeah. And they say, you're never going to do this. You're never going to. Well, funny that because I've done everything you said I couldn't. Well, I can't box, now I can. Yeah. I'm never going to move my hands again, now I can. Mm. I can't look up, yes I can. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I defied everything. But I love one... that, I love that so much, bro. Tears, I did. I've just, I've just, so I have them four letters, have you seen the four letter tattoo? Oh, I have them, oh. No. It's P-T-A-W, and it, it stands for prove them all wrong. Yeah, we'll so I fucking love that. Yeah, I love, yeah, yeah, I love that, man. I love that. Especially going against the grain and proving cool. it wrong. I love it, I love it. I, I love it. I, 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 I think I always liked it. I always liked someone to tell me that you can't do it because yeah. then I want to do it. Yeah, it gives you that hunger, doesn't it? I can't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. If it's yeah. Like, yeah. I remember Mrs. said to me when he was there, she said, I'm a bit worried about you doing that. I said, why? She said, because your heart alone, yeah. you'll do that till you die. And yeah. I said, yeah, you're right. Because there's no way I was not going to do that because that was my pinnacle. Yeah. If I can do that and every obstacle on it, not like the fucking Mickey Mouse people that done it with me, not everyone, but a lot of people skipped the things. Oh, yeah. I had the camera on everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I had to do it. And I, but I was happy to do that. I wanted yeah. to do that. And it nearly killed me. I couldn't walk for about a week afterwards because it was that intense, man. It was that hard. But that was my pinnacle of that. Getting over the uh, addiction of um, pharmaceuticals, I was sitting there one night with my brother in laws playing a. And I'm not married, but like, we call them brother in laws. Mm. My missus' brothers. We're playing a game of cards because I'm a recluse now. I ain't left the house in like two years. Yeah. I'm playing cards. Why don't you come out and all that? No. get panicky when I go past there I'm alright I'm happy living as I'm living yeah. they're, they're smoking joints and I thought oh man I thought like, I've got to take some pills in there I've got to, I've got to be in bed by 10 yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll take three of them I'll be dozy and then I'll, I'll fall asleep and they said why don't you just live a little and all that and I said you know give some of that nah 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 I thought, I thought man that's pretty good I had the best night's sleep in my life <laughs> And that was it. I was a stoner then for the yeah. next six years, Fuck seven years. Yeah. Fucking night and day. Well, not night and day. I'd only ever smoke in the evenings. But oh, if this, you know, and like I said, we say anti system and that. Again, because I like, if it's natural, of course, smoking's not good for you. We know that. But that got me off a lot of things. That yeah. saved my life from where was I going to go with them pharmaceutical things? Because I don't know where that, no, without value. Like, I think there's, there's the higher. So that seems to I mean, I've got my big eyes addiction on it and all that. Yeah. That, that, that. There's a lot of overdose rates and all that. Like, they don't really tell you, they don't really put it out there. There's a lot of over, there's a lot of deaths from the pharmaceuticals. 100%. There's a lot of deaths, I can't even remember the numbers, man. But I look to this bit like Channel Dog, Diazepam and that as well. Diazepam, yeah. But people are seeing people in jail and like, waking up on charges and on the Diazepam. They take the Diazepam. You know, and they're drinking that with it. Oh, it gives you a different effect. Yeah, it? yeah. And it sends people loopy and that. It? People, I know people who've done a jail and it's like, wait a minute, it's like, I got to this sort of occasion, this sort of violence, they've done this. One gives a kill, gives a glass in it, like glass in it. It was like, it was in diocese and drink. Do you yeah. get what I'm sort of saying? So, no, it does do, because I, I, we, we took a flight, and this is years ago, I took my diocese, and, and, I, and I also don't like flying, so I took more diocese. And then on the flight, I'd, before we got on the flight, I had a pre flight nerves yeah. drink, like Jack Daniels and Coke or something. I felt I had a cup as it goes. Then got on the plane. And I still know what I'm doing, so I'm still panicky. I yeah. take some more. Another Jack Daniels coat. That was with a missus. I don't remember the first three days of the holiday. I hired a car, driven it, man, left yeah. it open, keys in it. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was on diazes and a couple of drinks, so I can't yeah. imagine what it does, bro. Yeah, I don't know, it's mad, isn't it? That's a, ph it's, that's a pharmaceutical that's, so well, Exactly, and I, and I don't, you know, like I said, I'm a bit anti that just purely because I think that there's, there's better things like. Just do research, you don't have to take it from anyone, do you? Just research, like I, I had plenty of time, but I was a recluse, mm. probably like you've had some time yourself. <laughs> Sit there. I've read a few books. Yeah, you've read a few. Yeah, had some time. <laughs> but but you, you gain knowledge from that. And, and I, learned, I learned more from them books in integration than I've learned at school. I, probably, I learned the basics all really right, but even, even like, um, spelling, I can't spell whatsoever. Yeah. You know, I can just about read and I can pick, you know what I mean? But when it comes to spelling, I can't spell at all. So I always gain more from them books and that yeah. integration than I ever learned at school. Taught you more. Yeah, taught me more. Self-taught, that's what I was like. I wasn't educated in school. No, no I was mean, never educated in school. That's what we spoke about earlier, saying yeah. like, I, I don't believe in the education, what it is. No. I don't believe it ever helped me in my life in any way. But same as myself, I can only actually write in capital letters, mm. but I was dyslexic at school. So sometimes, and you say about spelling, so I say to like whoever I'm with, I'll get like a brain, how do you spell the? And I think, oh, shut yeah. up. You think, no, I swear to God, yeah. that generally happens to me. I forget yeah. how to spell things like, stupid like that. No. And I only ever write in capital letters. So if you tell me, can you write this out on paper? I think, ah, oh, because I'm not very good on computers, neither. I'm all right on PlayStation, that's about it. But <laughs> We're just about all right on PlayStation. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I, won't, I won't ask anyone for references on that. But I, uh, it takes me ages because I, I write and yeah. everyone's like, why do you write? Why is all it? But it's what it is, it's all I know how to do. So I find it's like when, when people do these like posts, all these people they do these mad like really sort of professional ones that I know on YouTube, yeah. they do these mad yeah, this like, well, so I can't do that and like it's like the amount of messages I get as well, that's why I do, I do a lot of voice notes and that now. I love the new technology, yeah, voice notes yeah. is the one like, because I so struggle and then, you know what I mean, it's just like, how are you saying, but it, it, 
the thing with these knife phones like that, they come sometimes you, you, you um press the word, it comes up. Yeah. If you press it, like you say the word, isn't it? So say different. Yeah. <laughs> but but then sometimes when I do it, I'm trying to say words. It's something else is coming up, and I think because I, I think because my jaw and all meds and all that, I sort, I sort of like um, mumble a bit. Like I have to really sort of, really, like, I'm actually trying to work on my speech and that better, trying to talk more. So when I'm trying to talk to this iPhone, I get like getting a fucking argument with it. I'm trying to tell a word, and it's just coming up saying different. I'm like, no, oh, I've voice noted, and then you know what I mean. You say the word, it's meant to spell it for you. It comes up, but like a dictionary. It comes out different. It comes out different for me, bro. Right? Mine does the same. Mine does the same, bro. <laughs> it's all so avoided. I, I think that's. I say the same. I say since I got burned and medicate, I don't know what it is, but I think I. Because I, I dribble and everything. Yeah. Sometimes I'll be sitting there, I'll start laughing and I go, <laughs> don't I? Yeah. And everyone goes, yeah, he's dribbling there. I get to laugh, to laugh about it, bro. <laughs> it is what it is, you know what I mean? I, I can't. My, I mean, my phone don't understand me for shit. And I've got fat thumbs. Yeah. So if I'm trying to text, sometimes I write something and I look back and it goes, are you dick free and you think like <laughs> you have to go don't I and delete it and I get stressed out on my yeah. phone but voice though it's like, funny you say that yeah because I, I think I've got the same I've got really bad speech mm. and someone else kept leaving me voice and I thought let me get into this a bit and then I remember the first voice I left to uh, actually a comedian guy I told you about earlier my friend and I went hello mate yeah um, uh, mate yeah Mate, mate, and, I said, and he said, fuck me, how many times did you say mate on that thing? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think you'd notice. And he went, I couldn't, I've not noticed. You said it about 40 times. You can't just do it sometimes. Sometimes you forget what you were sort of saying. Do you know what he's saying? Like, um, and you're like, it's, it's right, you're trying to think, but obviously it's still going. And you're like, um, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, man. And then it sends itself to say, fuck, I didn't even finish. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even get the rest of the story. Especially if you're on the ball quick, they're listening, oh, fuck me. Like, oh. Yeah, it's crazy, man. That's, that's a new level stuff, that stuff, man. But. So all the other stuff you've done since it's come out, I've seen obviously, obviously, obviously the book. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The book. So the book, I, I how mom, did it come about? How did it come about getting the book and that together? My mum, um, she was working, she was actually giving a little sound back herself, working in uh, women's recovery, women's groups. And Brandon Block was there, you know, the DJ. He was there and he, he just finished a book with a guy called Matt Trollope. And he'd done uh, Daniela Westbrook's two books. Uh, King of Ibiza, I can't remember the guy's name now. Tony Pikes, Tony yeah, he done his book. And uh, so anyway, but he was so all these he was quite affiliated with these people, yeah. like a, a ghostwriter. So she got his number from Brandon, and he, I said, "Would you be interested in doing a book for me?" He said, "Why do you?" And I said, "I just want to do it to help others. It wasn't someone approached me. I just wanted yeah. to do it to put it all into something." Because I'm trying to give back now, so yeah. I'm trying to think of ways to give back. I'm starting a charity, but I thought before that, maybe put my Did whole... you do the book before the charity? Yeah, I started it just before. And uh, I was still finishing it during opening the charity. But he's uh, So he used to come around. It's like therapy, really. The same as being with um, my psychiatrist. He used to come around. He used to allow me sofa. And he used to ask me loads of questions <laughs> about my life. And I thought it was quite probably good, because it made me relive a lot of things. Yeah. That I didn't, like I built a wall in front of I didn't really want to talk about no more. And uh, a lot of things he says to me, I can't put that in there. So like the things that we're talking about now. Uh, so anyway, he says, so he goes for it in the book. Charged me fucking shitload of money for it though, but. Not bad, yeah. He's, a, he, he's quite a serious guy to do a ghost show. But I think it was worth it. Do you know what I mean? I do think to get it out there, it was worth it. So that's where that came about. Just an idea. People said to me, you should write a book about it. Cause like when he used to tell the story, I used to go in and tell the story. You can only put so much in such a short amount of time. Mm. So I've done the whole court case because I, I also set presidents in law, but we'll go, we'll lead up to that in a bit. But So I, yeah, that, that book, I managed to put everything into that sort of thing, apart from childhood or anything, just straight from 2007 onwards mm. up to then, yeah. So that's how that come about. And uh, yeah, we put it up on Amazon or whatever it was. And because you don't, you just print a copy now, didn't you? Yeah. So yeah, and I, and, I, and I've and I've generally done it to if it made anything, I didn't have tremendous sales to be honest, but we was going to put it back into the charity to help others. Yeah. But then going back to the charity now, I also started the Terry Dunnage Foundation. I think. I've seen that. I've seen that. Like, well, You've seen that. Yeah. In twenty fifteen. We've actually st I've stopped it now because it's like anything. I started off with a big team like friends from young. Yeah, let's do. It. Yeah. Amazing. And then one day you stand and you think, look behind you, there's no one there no more. Do you know what I mean? You're on your own. When you're trying to do yeah. something good, I think, anyway, that 
not everybody's on that same journey, which is fair enough, everyone's on their own thing in life, you know what I mean? But Not everyone sees your vision sometimes, do they? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and to be fair, it was a lot of friends that said to me, you should do that. It wasn't saying that I ever really planned to do a charity. I was going to do the book and then somehow try and work with another charity maybe to help others, which I, I, I pretty much did later on whilst having my own. So I, I tend to help more people than I ever did trying to push my own thing. And then we became music based and that didn't really work out. And I just don't think I had, I think you need a bigger team to have a, be a registered UK charity. You do need a, at least a team of four or five of you, you know yeah. what I mean? So that was that. We've done a documentary uh, with Mala Nine, a friend of mine. That was just, was, we've done a low budget one sort of thing, but we won two awards with that. So that was quite good. I enjoyed doing that as well. That was just my first little bit of filming, you know, which yeah. led on to be able to be good in front of camera on other things. Um, yeah, that was the journey with that, really. And all, at the same time, I had a court case going on from what happened to me. I see something like this in Google. I think cause I didn't look into it. That's what I'm saying. There was something that I was trying to withdraw, but I did see something about a court case on Google. Yeah, so, yeah. so with the court case, we, we sort of, that was going on since I come out of hospital where the solicitor and What was it about? What, what was the court case? So it was about, it was fighting my uncle's um, house insurance. Yeah. So, you know, like if you, if you own a property, you have house insurance, which protects you. Like if you say it fell off your house, killed a neighbour, or you, your house blew up and the neighbours did, it sort of covers yeah. you as a sort of perimeter and yourself. And when my, when my uncle uh, passed away, I think my legal team put a hold on his house with my auntie and tried to um, get some damages awards from them because first of all I think I got paid out by the, the whatever the criminal court is you yeah. know what I mean for being attacked I think it was something stupid like 15 grand or something like that and um, that's what I think your life was worth yeah, yeah. So, you know what literally again. from me like, that's, that's, yeah. that's the number they'll put on the fucking life isn't it? that's what they do uh, and you know, it should be spoke about really because I don't think you know for no choice of my own if you're attacked in your own home but the government think and, and they say to you do you know what you might not never be able to work for the rest of your life you yeah. you're game over that's what they think your life's worth it's what time, mate. It's and like give you a bit of sick benefits that you can't even live on anyway yeah. you think like, how can you live on you that can't, you, you can't, can't. You it's, can't it's not worth you want to people left right and center and yeah and then, then they don't pay you, and then you, you, you don't, for yeah. me, and probably yourself, if you're not leaving the house, then yeah. they stop your money, and then they want you to come in for an interview. Oh, come in. There's hundreds of people here. Yeah. Well, do you know, I'm, I, like, I, I put anxiety and all that. I don't come out of my house. Yeah. Well, that, you, but you've got to come here, or we stop your money. Yeah. And you think, how no, does that, how can you the problem with that, man, honestly, this is, it is, and it's a cool, obviously, on the, the programs and all that, it's the problem with getting dug right out, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, judge them, say, oh, this, that, blah, blah. They don't know what people are going through and all that. Do you know what I mean, I come from a cancer. I come from people that find that got our graft and yeah, me too, yeah. mental issues. They don't. They don't label as mental issues and all that. Do you get yeah. what I'm sort of saying? They don't. Yeah, there's a whole other thing. There's a whole other thing. But they love to yeah. label everyone as well. Exactly. Don't they? He's got that. You've got that. Yours yeah. ain't good enough for this amount yeah, of money. Yeah, that's it. Right? I mean, How can you put a label on anything? Yeah, it is what it is. But I saw the. I saw the riots at the, the government they laugh. It's uh, the NHS and uh, I did like a post on Facebook. A couple of months back. And it was like the rise in money of like the politician was like eleven percent or something, and then it was yeah. just like three percent or seven or something. Like I can't quite hide the post and all that. Yeah. And it was just the way Boris and all that to say like we're in it together. Yeah, yeah, it's like, like, yeah. It's like, you and us, mate. The yeah. Benefits get capped and all this that the other politicians like eleven percent percent rise in the last couple of years. Like doing up their houses and yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah that's mad. Spending yeah. money, tax money on your fucking toasters and shit. You know what I mean, it's like yeah, we're in this together, man. Like, yeah. come on, man. Let's all, let's, let's all stay locked down and up. Yeah, yeah. Well, you all jetting around the world, man. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, looks good. That looks good. Yeah, yeah. they do. They do like dig out the vulnerable, and it, it, it's uh, do you know what I mean. It's hundred percent pressing that man. It does man. Well, you love this. You love this one, then. So when so when I said presidents in law, so my case was, we we now took on my uncle's UK Insurance Limited, hmm. which home Churchill. They own everything. Yeah, direct line. It's like the biggest insurance body in the UK. So we've took them on over eight years. And, and at one Is that point, the case was going on for eight years? Eight years. So I only years. saw a bit, I didn't look in because I wanted to talk, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's no, cool. Eight year long case? Eight years that went on for a while. Okay, oh, bro. Eight long years. So like eight years I was on benefits. Like I literally, I couldn't even make money if I wanted to, do you get yeah. what I mean? It's like I, I was where I was. And uh, for over them eight years, we went to county court first, we lost. Yeah. Then we went to high court. We lost, 
Now we have to appeal. Now mm. my legal team said, uh, now I want no win, no fee as well. They went, uh, oh no, the first time they were paid by my after event insurance, by my house insurance, because it was a legal battle, so yeah. they paid it. And then they said, oh no, you, you've lost now, now you're on your own. Sure. Then my legal team said, I tell you, this is the big thing now. We've, we've won the appeal at High Court, now we can go uh, Supreme Court, I think it was, up, up London. And they said, uh, but the chances are now, if you lose, you could own these lot millions. Oh. Do you know what I mean? You think, wow, fucking hell. And there's a right tough that he's, uh, and I said, what would you do? And he said, and I told him, this is the, my QC and my barrister. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't decide for you. This is your call now, but they can check. For the rest of your life, you never own anything because anything you own, these lot take off you. If you stay on benefits for the rest of your life, it don't matter. Yeah. So I went, all right. So I said, um, Fuck it, I'm all in. I've, all my life I've been, like we said, I, the underdogs. I said, I'm the underdog here. Let's, let's fight it all the way. Yeah. I don't care what have I got to lose. So we, we fought it, got to high court, and the three judges went in my favour. So the first time now, I've won this case. So we won it by getting them to um, a clinical psychiatrist we had to pay. to, And we changed... How we, when we won it, we set presence in law by changing the laws of everyone's insurances. As in, uh, they tried to say... So well, a massive game changer. Massive game changer, yeah. Yeah, presence law is like massive. Yeah, yeah. It only happens once in a decade or something like that. So if you Google him, crime books, my name's up yeah. there with it. Not that I've done it, my legal team done yeah. it, do you know what I mean? But it was a good law to change because they, my uncles, they tried to cover him by saying, no, nah, he was in his right state of mind. So they tried using the, men they tried using the mental, mental, uh, mental, uh, yeah, mental health side of it. He, he, he couldn't have been in control of his own thoughts. So then we changed law by saying, well, no, you don't matter what, if your thought changes, like if we're of the same mind now, mm. and me and you tomorrow, we're not thinking straight, we try to kill someone, then you still have a duty of care to others, or we do. So if we're paying insurance, you can't now pay insurance and they say, no, nah, he was mental. That's it, but they still, but they're still taking money off him. Yeah, still take the money so off him. That's what I'm saying. So, like, so like, that's what I'm saying. So it's like, but you're okay to still take money off him, but you don't. But you don't want to shoot. Yeah, you want to get out of it at the time. Yeah. So that's what we change in all everyone's policies. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. That, and that's right, rightfully so, because there's a lot of people in all walks of life getting away with it. Like, oh yeah, someone walks down the road, murders a a, a little kid or murders a, a mm. man, murders a woman for no reason. But, oh, he's mental health. Let's just get him help. And of course, we get you have to help people, but. You still have a duty of care to others. If yeah. you're insured, you pay that family out. 100%. You know what I mean? Because that's what's needed. And, yeah. uh, and that's what we changed, basically, over eight years. Yeah, yeah. Eight-year-long battle, and I'll say the highs and lows of that. You know, when you're sitting in court for hours and hours, I had the, the mirror sitting there, like the Daily Star, or whatever, all writing up, million-pound court case. Nah, no, there weren't even nothing like that. Because when I got paid out, they took my years of benefits back. Yeah. I had to pay all that back. Some after events insurance for having no win, no fee all the way for these eight years. Yeah. So by the time I got it, it's just like they was making out, it wasn't a million pound anyway, I think it was like 600 grand. By the time everything come out of it, you think, oh, fucking hell. I could, I could have worked for more than that for <laughs> three years, you know what I'm saying, brother? If I, if I worked and I was a saver, it was pointless. Yeah, they're trying to make out a big thing in reality, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. they're making out, yeah, they're all printing these things, like, and then everyone, I'm getting like people from the past, yeah, man. I think me and oh, you yeah, had a kid. Yeah, 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 I'm getting DNA tests to that, bro. Yeah, I have to Over a million pounds, I think like, fucking hell, I'm a burnt guy, just leave me alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? The people oh, coming out of yeah. woodwork and that. Yeah, I think, I think you're my dad. Yeah. What? I that's, think you had old friends and all that coming out of that as well. Oh, yeah, I had yeah. loads of them. I had, yeah. That's what I say when I started the chariot. I had, bro, I, you, look, you think I had an army of friends. Mm. Do you know what I mean? The minute I actually started living and you realised that, you know, I'm not paying your way, and, and I ain't as rich as what you all thought. Yeah. And then you look behind you one day, you think, yeah, I think I've, I've achieved something. And you think, there's no one, no one, yeah. uh, there's no group hugs no more. But, yeah, we're winning, yeah, we're done yeah, tough yeah. Work. There's no one about to sit in here, me on my own, yeah. with you today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad you're with me today, but I'm honestly... No, I'm, I'm happy to be with you, bro. Yeah, no. But I'm just saying, the reality of life is that, yeah. that is how it is. It's, you know, whatever our journeys are in life is our own journeys, isn't yeah. it? You know? And I sit here today, and, and it, and it seems like I laugh about it when I smile, but it's because I've just really become, a, you know, even about my daughter thing and that. I don't really have much emotions no more because I've done all that for years and been yeah. in so many dark places that I like to try and, you know, I also read that book, Law of Attraction, and I watched the, the, the documentary on Secret. YouTube, The Secret, sorry, yeah. yeah. 
Which is still the law of attraction. It is, yeah, it is the law of attraction. I read yeah. the book The Secret, sorry, is that what you meant by yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I've got my book Law of Attraction, isn't it? Mine's, yeah, you've like, got mine's, your like, mine's more of a leaflet, but I did that for a reason. I did it for a reason. It was never about around the book, like Law of Attraction, because like, you've got Napoleon Hills, but I was reading with so many books. Yeah. But the only reason I was reading because I was, I was away, do you know what I mean? I was like, it's different, and, you know, obviously I can't, my reading writing is terrible. And so I just wanted to break it down to sort of people, to sort of, I was trying to write it to myself, basically. I was just, that was the whole thing of it. To yourself, just, back to help Yeah, I was just writing, like, how would I try and get through to myself? And like, there's a bit of science behind law of attraction and that, and I just wanted to sort of like, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. And it's like, a self, you know, it's class self-help book, and it's like, people read over 40 pages. Tony Robbins said, like, when it comes to self-help books, people don't really read past two chapters and all this. So yeah. I was like, well, how many pages in a, in a self-help book is going to, you know, that how many like pages, two chapters? Yeah. And it was averaging about forty pages. So I thought if I write a book under forty pages, people might read it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean might read it all and that's what I did, yeah. Okay. yeah. Did you read the secret though? Yeah, 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 yeah I read the secret good. on Napoleon Hill uh think and go rich, but he was he was like more like the founder, like the law of attraction and he he did the whole like mind master and all that and secret to go and the secret's very like spiritual faithful with it but there's a lot of like science behind it and that as well and I was just fell in love with bro it just, it just sort of changed me give me that sort of purpose it, it really did sort of just drive me like you said and one of the key things I learned and for Jennifer Kilcorn actually and like, I did a little therapy inside and it was, it was like the ripple effect you know what you're saying and yeah, I yeah. think that was like one of the key things for me it's like I think that's why I really enjoy podcasts and that as well I think that's why I really enjoy this it's like because I realised like, how powerful words and actions can be and like, the, the domino effect it can have. <clears throat> and I think, you know, people watching this, they're going to connect with you. If not connecting me then with my yeah. story, but people, you know, people do, and it's amazing. And then uh, it's like your story, people ain't connecting with me, but you're going to come on, people are going to connect with your story. And it's, it's just having that massive sort of effect, and I, lo and I love that. And I feel like I come into the world and I put so many neg negative ripple effects in there. Yeah. And I'm just on like a mad mission to sort of like... Positivity. Yeah, and just to yeah. try and build people up. I feel this world just wants to fucking put you down. And I, you know, fucking you know about it, bro. You, you fall oh, through, oh, you went against the grain, no matter what, like, super bugs or fucking... Bro, I don't know. Because it's I don't know how you do it, but I do know you do it. I don't mean that. I, no, because you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you, it's it's mindset. mindset, yeah. yeah it's all about know. mindset. I couldn't, I couldn't respect you enough, Brian, like, to see yeah, you. I share it with you. It's amazing. It. And what you've done, bro, it's incredible. And people need to see it, because I know, like, we both come from the mental health as well. We've both, you know, we've both been through it, and there is people out there that are going through it and all this. and. Yeah. They look, it is like the things that we're going to say today and the things we're talking that like people see it. We don't even know that like people see it. People might like, close to us, watch it, might like, tell us, but, and they're taking something from it. Yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I love the most. You know? and that's, what, that's, what I, that's what I was looking forward to as well, on the main thing, because I just think what I said to you, it's so important to talk about it because, it, you know, from when I had the charity and that, as a man, like, they, they didn't want me to, not they didn't want it, I just wasn't accepted. When I started talking about body confidence, I was shunned. But I thought, man, a man's talking about body confidence. Yeah. Where, what's this all about? Do you know what I mean? Is this a new transgender fit? You know, no, it's just, I, want, I, I, I like my appearance. Like mm -hmm. any man, I used to do my hair in the mornings, brush my teeth. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe get, get a beard trim, shape, whatever it was. Yeah. Now all of a sudden I can't do that because I've got a beard missing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I had patches, I had hair that was back here. I had no eyebrows, I had to have them stitched in, operated from here. Because mm -hmm. I also had a few operations and that. My ears were melted to my head, so they had to get released. And it, But, you know, I didn't go mad, but ultimately I still want to, be who I was. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? You, you still want back what you had. Mm. You, or what you know, how I was born. I want to be who I am. Mm. So, and I want to be able to talk about that. And, I, and a lot of doors shut in my face because of that, I think. And then I was a bit too raw and open, which, like, that's what also why I look forward to it, just to be myself. That's the way to be. Yeah, like, if, yeah, I, yeah. if I say, bro. People ain't always like us for it, I'd say, right. I mean, you know who not exactly. I was on. Exactly. Well, we, st we stay real, we stay real. So it is 100%. Someone oh, said really. to me the other day, what is it that you can please some of the people some of the time, but not all of the people all of the time? 100%. And that's, that, that is how life is. But, you know, as we know ourselves, another thing good to touch on is that, you know, people, because people with him around me could say, like, oh, he's, he's still mad, he's like fucking. He's, he's paranoid, not paranoid, I suffer with anxiety, mm. which we both spoke about earlier, and, and that doesn't make me paranoid, it just makes me sometimes have bad days, yeah. Some day, and I have night terrors I might have, but I want people to be able to talk about that, because mm. why I suffer alone, because I suffered, probably like yourself, yeah. I suffered alone with all of this, when, I, when it used to happen to me, 
and I was in the night and I was, I can't breathe yeah. and all that. And I think like, that's quite scary because yeah. it's not it's not in front of any other man that you could like, you've, well, this is a this is a pot of punch up now. Yeah. It's win or fly or fly, whatever they call it. But this is me battling myself. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because myself's trying to kill myself for whatever reason, you know? And I think that is a big, they, this is why these are important for us to make it acceptable for this person going through it or that person's going mm. through it and make it talked about. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 100% I did the post on Instagram the other day and to tell people like people think, you know, I'm labelled the ball, more baller, done licence, all this, and I come out and say, well, I'm going to dip it, I'm going through it, and I'll start that on my Insta, do you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. I'm open, I don't get, like, all talk about it, like, anxiety. And the thing is that, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the mindset that I've developed, and, like, you know, my strength and that, like, my fight, my fighting spirit. But it's like, there's other people that are coming out of the system, or whatever, like, I'm, I'm in a sanctuary house in the hostel, like, and people, there was a video online, Obviously, that the, the guy comes from a flat, like, you know, it's not the most stable or settled address. Yeah. It's like, I mean, dealing with anxiety, coming to these sort of, you know, putting, you know, vulnerable people in these sort of places, and then you're saying you're battling anxiety, which I've got to do, it, it's horrible. And that's why it is important for people like us to come up with the platform and to tell people, well, we're going through it, it's all right, bro, you know what I mean? Exactly. It, it, it's, it, it, I mean, it, yeah. You know, like, hundred oh, percent. You know, and anyone that is going through this sort of thing, we can give them an hour saying to watch off and switch off and relate and hopefully buzz off, man. It's, it's amazing. But, it, you know, it, anxiety is, is fucking... Do you think it's underrated in the mental health game, like, in the system? Do you think people don't... I think it's written off a lot, yeah. Is yeah. It? I, that's just... I've been thinking this myself. Yeah, like, yeah, do you yeah. think it's... Yeah, like, written off. No, not underrated. It's never, it ain't fucking underrated, but... No, but underrated like, by the people that, that if we go to... Uh, an expert, yeah, so, yeah, then, yeah. Then it's underrated, like because they go, because I get that. Even if mm. for argument's sake, I had to go, uh, I had to have my gallbladder out, yeah. So I used to drink a lot of protein, so I ended up having to have that out because of the protein balls or whatever. And when I went in there, they're gonna put, me, oh, oh, he's, are you alright? Your heart rate's, up. yeah. Oh no, it's alright. He just suffers of anxiety. But which means it's all right. He just yeah, suffers. No, because right. because you rush me in. No one's, oh, you know, like, like yeah. we spoke about earlier, just a bit of calming. Anxiety is actually a thing. Yeah. And, it, and it can be intense. It's different levels of it, I believe. And I'm probably quite high up there mm. because, and, and it never leaves. No. You don't, like, I've had it for 14 years. It don't just go. So I struggle sometimes. And, and, but I think anyone, even someone like a family member or something, say, it's just your anxiety. Yeah, but you might just say yeah. that, but it's the anxiety that I'm battling with. It's not you personally. Yeah. Sometimes, you know what I mean? But you don't know my levels of it, so just be supportive. Yeah. And that's what I think is where I say it's underrated by, because on a bit of paper, wherever I've been medically, it's always, yeah, it's just a bit of anxiety. It ain't just a bit of fucking anxiety. This shit's not. waking me up in the night. This shit's yeah. stopping me from doing really good things that I'd love to do mm. at times. Do you know what I mean? It's not always affecting me, but it's always lingering somewhere. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, it's, it's, it's true to say that it's fucked up, I think, and so it's, it's my biggest demon at the minute, it's one of the biggest yeah. ones I'm battling, and it can affect everything, it can affect relationships, it can affect your day to day, like, yeah. there's things that you're saying you could be out there doing and that, I'm so, yeah. like, well, and then it, that's what leads on to depression, do you know what I mean, you think down, yeah. like, yeah, I mean, you can't, yeah, like, it's, it's you know. And I, and I watched that video, the video you said when you lived in your hostel there and all that, mm. and, you know, like, I think it's pretty cool in a situation. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I think it hands off to you. You are trying to do good things. Yeah. That, is it anyone else? Same thing. Any any old person. I think you handled that well. To yeah. be fair, I think no. Well, it'd be very different from ten years ago. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. I'm, I'm yeah. Proud of it, you know, yeah. I'm proud. I'm, I'm proud. I think you should be proud of that because I think that that's where you show you grown as a man from yeah. what you've been through as well. You know, because anxiety. Like someone done that on my door. I, 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 I probably been so good. My kids are at home. Whatever. Yeah. I know your situation different, but still. Anything that come to my door, my anxiety alone yeah. is the biggest protector of mine, as well as mm. the things it does to me. Yeah. It does some really good things for me, <laughs> some really bad things, but you know, yeah. that's it how can, it is. I think you can, it can drive you sometimes, but I think it might admit, you know, it is a con it's like, it's a constant fight. I, mean, I know people, you, 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 you relate to it, it's, because it does, but I think with me, with the anxiety, it sort of dipping into the sort of depression, the sort of dip, the dip in the down in. Yeah. You know, I could I could find it easy to go out and just drink. You know, I've got to put pressure. I don't do myself any favours too, because I'm I'm a man on a mission as well, right? So I get that that sort of like you saying earlier, that, that sort of fight we had, like the PTA proving we're wrong. Like, I have this yeah. mad dream that like, it won't be stopped. 
like, I'm gonna come out and I will achieve what I'm gonna achieve and I ain't going anywhere until I fucking achieve it. You know, but they'll take it on and take it on. I know I'm pressuring myself and I'm, I'm probably my own worst enemy with it as well, but. but I think, I, think yeah. I, just, I just relate exactly what you said there. That's that's when I'm at my worst if I take too much on. Mm. Do you know what I mean? If, I, if I've got like this going on, that going on, and then all of a sudden, sometimes it, then that's when it, yeah. the anxiety then turns into a bit of my dark side mental health yeah. a little bit where it's, or, or depression. Yeah. Let's call it depression because. I can't get that way as well. If I've got too much going on and I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, that, then my brain, because I'm overthinker anyway, and the same as yeah. you, I want to achieve everything. Yeah, yeah. And then I get, conf then I stuck it. Oh, where am I going now? And then I don't know where I'm going. I'm yeah. like running in a circle again. Think, fuck. Oh, and that's why I think it's so important. I think I'm, I'm actually taking this back away from me again today. Obviously, this is why law of attraction was meant to meet in that today. It has that ripple effect. Yeah. It's just I'm gonna bring it back a little bit and set the daily goals in that again. Yeah. Because you know I said it in my book. You know I've got to practice what I preach. I said it in those goals and it is true. But you know, you know when you come out there's so much going on. Out here. The, you know sort of lockdown for me come out. It was, my world is very small. My world is the world. It's very big now. And there's a distraction. It's so easy to get lost in that energy. I bet you had it as well when you come out when you had that driven you're hungry. You're trying to you know charity and you do this yeah. and do that. And that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I was getting, I, I, and I, I pretty much burnt myself out because I, mean, yeah. I went like I said to you. I went on this big high. Yeah. And everything was going so good. And then you probably be mad. I was, I was like amongst things and I was talking at big events. Things, yeah. You know the things that I never believed I'd done in my life. And then like, and everyone's good. So, you know, like rubbing my shot, getting a warm yeah, up before yeah. I go on. I'm only going to talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you're going for a big fight. Like, oh, son. And you're like, oh yeah, no, I'm Terry Dunnage. But, and then you look around and there's no one there no more. And you think, why the fuck did everyone go then? And you think, you know what I'm trying to say? But no one, I think in life, you, you have to just, like you said, stick to your own thing. Don't take too much on. Because that's what I did. I think that was the demise of my charity. I, I, I sort of, if I could turn back, I probably wouldn't do the charity anyway. I'd just be myself helping people. Mm. Like, so maybe I'd have written a bit more inspiring, but maybe talked a bit more, but probably not try to do all the things I tried to do all at once. All at once. Yeah. yeah. See, now, because I left London, best thing that ever happened in my life, I left London, come down to the south coast as well, and I actually realised who was who, and you actually realised that it's just yourself and who you love in your life, mm. or who loves you, who is around you, is the most important, without all the distractions. And then that, 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 that was my biggest lesson now. Like today, I found happy, you know, like quietness and. Yeah. And. and Bl I, is it blissful? Is that blissful? Is that bliss they call it? Blissful, yeah, blissfulness, yeah. I think. Yeah, I, I can literally. I can, I can take a paddleboard on the sea, be be at one, you know what I mean? At one with the sea. Oh, I like that, that. be at one, that's like, yeah, yeah, right, be at one with the sea and that. And, and now, like. Yeah, I ain't got loads of, I ain't got all them fake, do I come here, do I come here, do yeah. mate, 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 yeah, because when I moved, there was no mate, mate, that phone weren't ringing no more, do you know what I mean, so that, yeah. that was a good lesson, and and the pods that do stay in contact, is the ones that truly cared, yeah. and that was my, and, and yeah, I love it, and I come down here, nobody knows me, yeah. do you know what I mean, no one goes, what the fuck, what happened to you, mate, or like, yeah. you know, like, lucky enough, where I live in Pompey, like, every, all the sailors have got, even the birds have got tattoos, so, <laughs> <laughs> I fit right in, it don't matter. No one goes, Cool, you got tail on your face, man, gold teeth. Like, yeah, I'm right. Oh. So, yeah, I. I it's the South Coast, we were, any South Coast we're accepting, innit? I think that's an easy, they're just you know, very humble people. <laughs> I'm on my fan, old cockney roots, innit? All they was That's all my fan, yeah, so yeah. 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 Hackney, big old Hackney. Yeah. They were up there and that. Bowen, it's that all out of the South Coast, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's it. All about the seaside. I love it, man, I love it down there. Um, so what's the future then? What's the future then? Honestly, mate, I don't know. It's the same thing. I've tr I've done the podcasting. Uh, I quite enjoyed that as well. Like we said earlier, it's, it's nice. It's very beautiful. Well, it's very beautiful. Yeah, it's, like, it's very beautiful. Yeah, I love just yeah. sharing stories and that. Like I love yeah. listening to other people's stories now. You know what I mean? Because everything I take from people that inspire me now. Like I believe you today. Today, and it's exactly the same as you. If I see someone and I talk, if I like something, it's because I, I've I've already watched something of that person like yeah. yourself. And then I just know that that's, I'm attracted to whoever I'm attracted to. Mm. And the, the, when I've done the podcast, because there's three of us, sometimes someone come in, I, I didn't even know. Yeah. And I think, man, and they'll go, that, that, that was all right. I think that was the best one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I've, I've connected in one way or another. But yeah, I'm not quite sure now. I don't know what the future holds for Terry. I don't know, you know, as a, I, I think I still want to advocate for men's mental health. Yeah. I think I've just got to wait till I find my lane of something that I can do yeah. solely on my own so I don't rely on 
because I get too bromancy like I, I want everyone to do well and, yeah, yeah. And, and some people just not on the same mission you can't unless no, you that's one thing it. I'm learning at the minute about it it's hard to get people together sort of, yeah I'm lucky if I'm my cameraman Jamie you know what I mean like you know, yeah. three people that's you find someone who sees the vision of what I'm trying to do here you know and you support me so I get fuck off doing what we're doing but it's, it's more yeah. the point you believe in the message isn't it that's Absolutely. the message we're trying to do but tell uh, like, I couldn't do it if you like it's all coming man. do you know what I mean and, yeah I definitely think you should do something in a minute more from that, bro. Definitely. No, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, 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 like I said, I, you know, I sometimes I, it's like anything, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's, I, I, I had the vision, and I don't like to lose. But when I had the vision, I didn't actually know what the vision was. Yeah. So when I rolled with all of this, and then I came to this point, I don't actually know how I got it. Do you get what <laughs> I mean? Just winged it. <laughs> I just winged it. That's, 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 I mean, I James Nigger was always here. I was like, well, dude, I'm winging it. I yeah, mean, that's, 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 that's Winging it somehow, like me, and we just exactly. with it. Yeah, yeah that, and that's that exactly, I just winged it to this point, mm. and then from this point, I, I I guess I've got to find that vision, and then I'll nail it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But where everything in life, I've done the move down here, and everything was just like, I've had a lot of learning curves, like we just spoke about, and then, and then you know, and my journey's been like big highs and lows, like I said, and I don't think I've ever really got totally better. I have obviously, and I can't. I know. I know. I'm strong enough to inspire others and everything else. Definitely. I have still got my anxiety issues, like self. I still feel, but I think that's part. I think every, even fucking famous people, celebrities, whatever we want to call them, have got suffer with things. You know mm. what I mean? It's just not. It's, some things we just have to accept is going to be part yeah. of us now. And I just need to have that vision, like you. I just need to find what it is. And I sit there many times. I know I could do so well, mm. and I want it. And I've got the drive. It's just, I've got to find that what. When yeah. I found the what, I'll put that into, every, and I'll throw that into the law of attraction yeah. and I'll make that happen. I love it, I love it. Is there anything you've happened to do to me? I mean, and likely, 100% likely. If you ever need something, like I said, for you, I'll, I'll tread the ocean for you because I know your, your, your goal is the same. Yeah. And, I, and I, I get on, I prefer to help other people. That, that's yeah. what I'm pretty good at. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, yeah, but I appreciate it. And anytime you need it, the same as. And people want to find your book? Uh, Amazon, um, Road to Recovery. Put a link with the, the links and all that as well, anyway. And yeah. social media? Social media, Terry Dunnage, yeah. at Terry Dunnage, sorry, on Instagram. That's pretty much, I've got all the, the Twitters, Terry Dunnage Foundation, Facebook's Terry Dunnage Foundation, but Twi uh, Instagram's really where I'm at. So I'm not a big yeah, social same. guy, no, so if you DM me on there, I answer back. Um, and that's it, I haven't got any other websites or nothing, so that's, that's me. Oh, I've got, I've got also, sorry, I've got a um, documentary on YouTube, Trial by Fire, which is quite interesting for people to watch. That's that's the journey from start to finish. Yeah. That's, that's the inspirational one to show you people. That link? Oh, sorry, well, I'm, actually, I'm glad I didn't watch that because I wasn't too. You didn't know too much. Yeah, yeah. I didn't put it on there, but I think yeah. for that, that that just that shows that was my thing that I'm most proud of because yeah. that sort of showed from where I came from to what I achieved, and that and that, and it's not. I don't plug it for any other reason because I don't care about views and all. I, I plug it purely because I think if you watch that journey, if you're in a dark place, if I can do it, I'm yeah. just a normal council state kid. I'm not no, yeah. nothing. I'm just a man like you, or a woman. Well, I'm not really yeah. a woman, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. We can do it. Put the links in the description box and all that. And anyway, but the big, I'm gonna watch that documentary. Yeah, you know, because anybody asked for some links to the podcast stuff, I was listening. I ain't seen that, innit? No, I've been watching that. Yeah, have a watch of it. So um, you think, man. So, my brother, like, listen, come on with Danny, man. Thank you for having me, brother. I appreciate it, man. And so, my brother. My South Coast brother. That's it, man. The South Coast, hey, brother. We're the seaside, mate. It's all now. That's it, man. Let's go for some fish and chips, mate. <laughs>